Corolla Ficklin McLean at no Corolla Ficklin McLean. Welcome W Y L C O M E dot com. Now we're going to continue looking at the subjunctive versus the indicative mood. And here I have other reasons for the subjunctive. When you're speaking about ignorance or doubt, or when you say, I don't think, you don't think, we don't think. But remember now, you're talking about something, something or someone else. For example, if I say to you, I doubt or I don't believe or think that you understand. Okay. Now, if I say that I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, do that with he, she, uh, with he or she, or Mary or whatever. I doubt or I don't believe or I don't think that Mary understand. Not understands, understand. Because that's a subjunctive because you're talking about a doubt or a belief. Not that you believe, but you don't believe. Okay, when you normally say believe, you don't use a subjunctive because that's much more sure. But when you're talking about a doubt, or you're talking about it as being ignorant of something, then you use a subjunctive. Okay, in Spanish, dudo, I doubt. No creo, I don't believe. No pienso, um, I don't um, think or I don't believe, depending on how you use the word believe in English more than in Spanish. Que entiendas, as. Not entiendes. It's, a, it's the ER verb. And in the present tense, the present subjunctive, the ER and IR verb take. ER and IR verb take the AR ending and the AR verb takes the ER ending. Okay, you'll see all that. That's structure, that's pretty structure. It's very easy to teach the structure, very easy, very easy. All you do in exchange, AR verb takes the um, ER structure and the, in the present tense and the ER verb takes the AR, but that's very easy. What's hard is when do you do it? So do though, I doubt, no creo, I don't believe, no pienso, I don't think, or I don't believe that you understand. Do though, no creo, no pienso, Que entiendas, not entiendes. Impersonal opinion. It's fantastic. It's terrible. It's good that I'm going to use, instead of you, I'm going to use he, she, or it. I'm going to use she. So it's fantastic. It's terrible. It's good that she understands or that he understand, or that the neighbor understand, okay? It's a subjunctive, it is not the indicative because you're not talking about an objective fact. So, que fantastico, que terrible, que bueno, que entiendas. In Spanish is very clear as a subjunctive. In Spanish, I don't have to um, just use one tense and say, well, if I use another tense, it's invisible. It's always visible. The subjunctive is always visible. You always know it's a subjunctive versus the indicative. You always know, okay? In Spanish, it's very clear. And that's good if you understand the subjunctive and you know the subjunctive, that's good. But it's bad if you don't understand the subjunctive and you're saying to yourself, why are they using that tense? I've never seen in tiendas you know, uh, versus entiendes, entiendes, right? I don't wanna put the accent too strongly. Entiendes, what, 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 what is this us? 
And sometimes the many verbs that are irregular in the present indicative uh, is um, many of those verbs are irregular in the present subjunctive. So the verb um, they see uh, is irregular in the present subjunctive because it's irregular in the present indicative. So in the present subject, they see it as to say. In the present um, um, indicative, it's digo, dice, dices, dice, decimos, dicen. It has three forms. It has the digo, it has the dice and dice, dices and dice. Then it goes back to the decimos, and then it goes to decent. So it has three forms. In a subjunctive, luckily enough, it only has one form, but it's irregular. It's que digas, no, que diga, que digas, que diga, que digamos, que digan. Totally irregular. Totally, not, it doesn't have you know three different forms, but it's totally irregular. Okay, and we'll look at how the verb is structured. That's the easy part. The hard part is knowing how to use it. Let's see here. Okay, when you were saying even if, because you're talking about an imag, you're talking about a present that isn't, right? Even if you were a millionaire, but you're not a millionaire. You're not, you're not even anywhere near it. You're not even a thousand air. Frankly, you're not even a hundred air, okay? So you're not, but we're talking about it as if you were. And that were is a subjunctive in English. And the way you say even if in Spanish is aunque. So when you say aunque, you are going to use a subjunctive because you're talking about an imaginary present. So even if he writes the letter, but he's not writing the letter, it's not going to write the letter, but even if he writes the letter, I won't change. So tell him not to waste his time. So even if he writes the letter, but nobody said he will, or he didn't say he will. So aunque. Now here's the question. Do you speak like this in English? Do you think like this in English? Because if you don't think like this in English, then you don't understand the structure. But even if he write, it should be even if he write the letter. I put rights because in English, the subjunctive is not recognized by most people. So if I put, even if he write the letter, most people would think, oh, that's, she's giving out cards and it's wrong. But it should be, even if he write without the S, the letter, because the, the clause with the even if, that's the verb that takes the subjunctive. I won't change, which is an independent clause. Even if he writes the letter, it's a dependent clause, but I won't change, which is an independent clause uh, is stating a fact. I won't change, okay? Stating a fact, so that's in the indicative. The part that's in the subjunctive is the part, is the dependent clause with the even if. So, aunque escriba, not escribe, because it's an IR verb, so it's gonna take an AR ending. Aunque escriba la carta, now you can say in two different ways, I won't change. You can say, no cambiare, or you can say, no voy a cambiar. No voy a cambiar means I'm not going to change. So even if he writes, even if he writes the letter, I'm not going to change or I won't change. So aunque escriba la carta, comma, no cambiare. Cambiare is the future. And we'll talk about how to use structure the future later. Or no boy cambiar. Okay, so here we go. Even if you call me, 
even if you call me, right? That, that call should be in the subjunctive in Spanish because that's the clause, that's a dependent clause. And you have, even if uh, that, even if, then you have the subject, the verb in that clause is in the subjunctive. Even if you call me, I won't return. Aunque me llames, aunque me llames. That's the verb llamar. It's an AR verb, but in the subjunctive, it takes the ER ending. Aunque me llames, no regresaré. No regresaré. No regresaré. No problem there. Sometimes I have a little problem doing the future because the future is the whole tense and then you put on the, inf uh, the, the, the endings, the inflection. So it's, it's the A, the AS, the A, the AMOS, and then the N. No regresare. Okay, and the uh, endings are accented. No regresare. No regresare. I can say if I if I just calm the, if I just relax my tongue and then I just go regresare to say the whole thing together. Regresare, or no voy a regresar, which means I'm not going to return. Um. Once again, if you don't understand, don't worry about it. We use the subjunctive a lot in Spanish. A lot, a lot, a lot. Even though the subjunctive mood in English is invisible, that does not mean it doesn't exist. It's just that the structure doesn't help you to recognize it. But the type of sentence, even if he writes a letter, I won't change. That's subjunctive in the, in the um, uh, dependent clause. Whether you recognize it or not, it's still subjunctive. The structure doesn't help you. Where in Spanish, the structure helps you to recognize the subjunctive. In English, the structure doesn't help you. So you don't have to worry about changing the verb and changing the endings and learning the subjunctive um, conjugation in the present tense and in the past tense. You don't have to worry about it. In one sense, it's easier because you don't have to worry about it. But in another sense, when somebody's trying to explain it to you, you're going, but th no, that looks like, you know, a regular sentence, because to a lot of people, the regular sentence is the indicative. Let me see. Okay, I'm going to do the next sentences in another video, because that's a little bit more complicated. So I want to thank you, Corrala Ficklin McLean. Welcome, W-Y-L-C-O-M-E.com. Thank you very much. And um, if this has, an, has been at all helpful, um, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. So thank you. Stop sharing. And I wish you a good day. <laughs>